Hey, what's up? Let's talk about his slow motion. Slow motion is a type of footage that you need to plan in advance. Why? Well, because you need to set your camera at very high frame rates so that you can slow down later on in post. However, today I have a trick that I want to show to you and you don't need to own a very expensive piece of equipment to get very buttery smooth cinematic footage. Come with me and I'll show you how to get it done. See, before we talk about that, first we need to understand why slow motion. Slow motion is usually utilized to give a different feeling to the story, to change the mood and to change the pace of the story. And it usually gives this cinematic feeling. So the application that we're gonna utilize today is called DaVinci Resolve. It is completely free and you can download it directly from their website. I'm gonna leave the links in the description so it will be easier for you. So let's jump into the computer and let's get started. So the first thing that you're gonna need to do it here is to create a new project. In order to do that, you just need to click here, new project. So you just give it a name. and then hit create. So once you have the application opened and you have created the project, the next thing that we need to do is to add the files. So I have separated here already a few files that we're gonna utilize and I'm gonna drag and drop this into the timeline. So this will be our first hero shot. If you click in the file itself, then you navigate towards the top where you see inspector. And if you open it, then you click on file. Then you're gonna see that the original frame rate that this was shot, it was 25 frames per second. So the next thing that we're gonna need to do is to right click on the file, click on read time controls, and you're gonna see at the bottom of the clip that you have a percentage. This is equivalent to the speed of the clip. So if you replay this clip in real time, this is how it looks like. Now, the next thing that I want you to do is to change this 100% to 25%. So this is how we get slow motion. So we need to reduce the speed of the clip. So it's pretty straightforward, right? <laughs> so what happens when we slow down a clip that it was shot at 25 frames per second? Let's have a look. So it looks pretty choppy, isn't it? Now, here's the magic that we're gonna need to utilize that is gonna make this crazy buttery smooth. Let me show you the tricks. So go back to the inspector and go to the video tab. Once you are in the video tab, scroll down towards the bottom. And then I'm gonna see here an option that is called Retime Rescaling. Now, within this option Retime Rescaling, you need to select the Retime process as Optical Flow. So select Optical Flow in the Retime process. Then you need to select the Motion Estimation as speed work. Pay attention because these two options are very important in order to make it work. Now, once you have selected both options, you need to render the file because it is a very process intensive task and you might not be able to play it in real time. So you see how slow it is if you try to play in real time with these two options enabled. That's why it's important that you render the file before you play it. So let's stop this clip and let's now render the file. In order to render the file, you need to right click on it and select rendering place. Okay, you can leave the options as, as is and click on render. Then you need to select the location. It's just a temporary location, okay? Then click open. Now give it time because it will take time to render. All right, so now that the file is rendered, let's have a quick look how it looks like. It looks pretty smooth, isn't it? 
So let's move to the next hero shot that it was shot with an iPhone. Let's carry on. And let me open the, the retirement controls. Reset speed 100%. Okay, so this was shot with an iPhone. It's already pretty smooth footage, but I want to make this like a slow motion. Okay, so how we can do that? So we can go down here to the speed, change speed. Let's make it 50%. Okay, and again, what happens when we play a clip that we slow down in post? You see, it looks a little bit choppier. So here we're gonna do the same process. Okay, we're gonna go to the video tab, scroll down to the retime process and select optical flow. Motion estimation, always remember to select the speed warp. So again, we're gonna need to render the shot. Right click on it and then click render in place. Select open and let it flow. So it takes a little bit of time to render the files. So grab your coffee and wait for a little bit. So once the file is rendered, let's play it back. Okay, so this is our second clip and this is how it looks like at 100% speed. You see, another advantage of slow motion is to reduce camera shake. You see that at the end of this clip, you have a little bit of shake in the video. Let's see it again. You see there? You see this bump, right? Okay, so like we did before, let's right click in the file, go to retirement controls, and here where it says 100% speed, let's change it to 25%. So always remember, in order to get the slow motion effect, you need to go to the inspector, then to the video tab, scroll down to the retime and the scaling and select the option optical flow and then speed warp. So after you have selected both of the options, you need to render the file. So right click on it and click render in place. All right, now that the file has been rendered, Let's play it back and see how it looks like. Pay attention to the mood of the scene with the real-time playback and then with the slow motion. See, both are nice, but the slow motion gives this cinematic feeling. You see, when she smiles, By the way, even the camera shake, it's very less noticeable than the original file. See it again with the bump. So what are the drawbacks of utilizing this method? Well, it's not really applicable to 100% of the shots. I'm going to tell you why. Let's go back to the first shot that we took. If you play back this shot and you pay attention to her hands, you're gonna see here with the slow motion that we did in post that you might find some artifacts. It doesn't happen with all shots, okay? It depends on the movement. Now, one thing that I realized is that when you have very, very fast movements and with small things, you might end up getting those artifacts. But again, it's not with all shots. So you can try different shots to see which one you can slow down, apply the effect without getting the artifacts. But sometimes there are no artifacts at all. Okay, let's go back to the clip of the bridge. So again, this was slowed down using the method and there is zero artifacts. You see? Again, this is just another tool for your arsenal. Now you have the capability of slowing down footage in post-production without having to worry how it was shot in the first place. There are the caveats that I explained to you, but you can take case by case and see if it will help you with the footage that you take. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you like, give a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe, and I see you in the next one.